Very good morning. My name is Eric Larsson and in this video I'm going to explain what Massive MIMO is and also showcase an acoustic Massive MIMO testbed that has been built and which is being used for projects by students in our university. So Massive MIMO is an emerging technology for 5G wireless access where the key concept is that base stations are equipped by a large number of small antennas and these antennas simultaneously communicate with a large number of terminals. Now, in real 5G, this communication takes place over the ether using radio frequency waves to carry the information. In our acoustic massive MIMO testbed, in contrast, we are using loudspeaker elements both as antenna elements in the base station array and as terminals. Importantly, however, the physics behind the wave propagation is substantially identical if you compare radio frequency waves and acoustic waves. So, what is Massive MIMO in more detail and how does it work? Here's the main concept. So we have a base station. This base station is equipped uh, with a large number of antennas. And these antennas, they simultaneously communicate with a large number of terminals. This communication proceeds in two phases, first the uplink and then the downlink. Up, down. Uh, during the uplink, the terminals transmit to the base station array. And they all transmit simultaneously. And all the base station antennas listen. And then after the uplink comes the downlink. And in the downlink, the base station array transmits. Uh, it transmits and all the terminals listen simultaneously. And during the downlink, all the base station antennas are simultaneously active. And then after the downlink, it's time for the uplink again. Uh, and this way it goes uplink, downlink, uplink, downlink. And the switching between uplink and downlink happens rapidly, about a thousand times a second. So the time here during which the uplink is active, during which the downlink is active, is short. It's on the order of a millisecond, which is typically shorter than the channel coherence time. The consequence of that is that the propagation channel between any base station antenna and any terminal that propagation channel can be viewed as a linear time-invariant system and therefore characterized by its impulse response. We call that impulse response in the uplink H of T and the corresponding impulse response in the downlink G of T. Now, and here's the crux, by virtue of reciprocity of wave propagation, these impulse responses H of T in the uplink and G of T in the downlink, they are equal. So now, in the uplink, uh, in order for the base station to make any sense of whatever the terminal is transmitted, the base station needs to know or have a good estimate of these channel responses H of T between every pair of base station antenna and every terminal. And it forms such estimates by listening to special waveforms transmitted by the terminals called pilot waveforms. And these pilot waveforms are sent simultaneously by all the terminals at the very beginning of the uplink phase so here and here and these pilot waveforms they are pre-agreed between the terminals and the base station array so the base station already knows what to expect and when it listens to the pilots it can then use the received uh, information to estimate these impulse responses H of T. Now in the uplink still uh, during the uh, remaining part of the uplink, the terminals transmit payload data. And in order for the base station to be able to decode this payload data, in, in particular, in order for the base station to be able to separate these terminals, because remember, they all transmit simultaneously, the base station uses knowledge of these impulse responses H or T. Then, next, it's time for the downlink. And in the downlink now, importantly, the base station uses its knowledge of H of T that it gained during the pilot phase in the uplink 
together with the reciprocity property, which tells us that the response in the downlink is equal to that in the uplink. And it uses this knowledge to do something called beamforming. Beamforming means that it transmits simultaneously to all the terminals and it sends different data to each one of the terminals without causing substantial mutual interference between them. Pictorially, you can think of beamforming this way. Here is the array. Um, the array forms special beams directed in different directions in space. The first beam directed to a place where, say, the first terminal is located. And the next beam directed into a direction where, say, the second terminal is located. And importantly, the antenna patterns of each individual base station antenna those are omnidirectional, close to omnidirectional. However, by virtue of the combined action of all these ele antenna elements simultaneously, beams are formed into narrow directions in space like this, and that's what's called beam forming. And again, uh, crucial for this to work is that the base station on the uplink has a good estimate of all these h of t's, and on the downlink that it has a good estimate of all these g's of t's, and both of them can be learned simultaneously by listening to the pilots in the uplink phase. All right, so now let's have a closer look at the te test bed and see how it actually looks like and functions. Uh, this is Simon, one of the students who built and implemented this project. Uh, welcome, Simon. Good morning. How are you today? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. It's nice to be here. Great to have you here. Um, so this is the base station array. Each one of these devices functions as an antenna. These are the terminals. Each one here functions as an antenna. These devices here are built from an off-the-shelf loudspeaker element. And the basic observation that we started off from was that a plain loudspeaker element is a reciprocal device and can be used both in transmit and in receive mode. When used in transmit mode, we feed it with an amplified signal and it generates a sound wave that can be heard by humans or recorded by a microphone for that matter. When used in receive mode, then we need to connect it to a high impedance input amplifier. And when connected that way, it substantially works as a microphone element. So what we did was that we took the plain loudspeaker element we built a circuit that consisted of an amplifier in the transmit chain, and high input impedance amplifier in the receive chain, and then a physical relay that switches between transmit and receive. And that switching happens when we switch between uplink and downlink in the system. So Simon, tell us, uh, how many of these devices do we have here? Well, in this setup that we have currently deployed here, we have a total of 16 of these modified devices. We have 14 over here in the base station array, and we have two over here as two different terminals. And all these units are connected with the wires to a DA and AD card in a computer, which we can interface directly from MATLAB. And we have created software that can use this system. And it's of course possible to add more units if we'd want to. So that processing in MATLAB, does that happen all in real time? Yes, it's all in real time. Oh, interesting. Um, so in much of the massive MIMO literature, uh, there seems to be an assumption that the spacing between the antennas uh, at the base station is half a wavelength. What spacing do you have here in this experimental setup? Uh, well, currently we have a bit closer than half the wavelength. Mm -hmm. And we've noticed that for this system, it isn't that a large factor if we have them close or if we separate them by actually half a wavelength. And that's probably because they are quite directional in antenna patterns. Mm -hmm. So if we just try to randomize their angles a bit, we can emulate the, an omnidirectional antenna. Mm, I see. Uh, so tell me, what type of processing, we spoke earlier about beam forming, mm -hmm. so more specifically, what type of beam forming are you using here? Uh, well, we're using a type of beam forming called zero forcing. And that's when the array here tries to form a beam to one of the terminals, it tries to make the beam such as that the interference to all other terminals are zero, mm -hmm. no interference. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. Uh, can we run it? Yes, of course. Wow, that was loud. So what is it that we are hearing here? Well, I think we heard two, uh, two runs of a uh, procedure where we first heard a burst from over there, which are the pilots. That, that was the uplink. Uplink. That was the uplink. And we only send pilots into uplink. We don't care about uplink data. Mm -hmm. Then there was a short break. Mm -hmm. And then we heard the downlink data from the array. And that was repeated. Right. Uh, so we don't send any data in the uplink. Uh, no. Because the point here was that we wanted to illustrate the importance of the reciprocity concept. And the array transmits different data to the two terminals, and that transmission all happens simultaneously. Yes. Uh, what type of modulation are you using here? Uh, well, we're using a modulation of QPSK, and with that we reach a bit rate of somewhere about 250 mm -hmm. bits per second, real time. And uh, the bit error rate that we get is a handful of percent, hmm. uncoded. Hmm. And what was the carrier frequency again? Ah, 800 <coughs> hertz. 800 hertz. Yes. Right. So uh, what would happen here if we started to disconnect some or most of these devices? Uh, would the system still function? Yeah, if you only disconnect some of them, it would. But uh, there, there is one point. If you get down to below two elements in the array, then we can't zero force anymore because we need at least, at least as many elements over here as we have terminals over there. Right. And that said, Massive MIMO is a completely scalable technology. So the more base station antennas we add, the more the performance of the system improves. Uh, thank you very much. This has been very interesting. Thank you, Simon, for coming and demonstrating this. Yeah, thank and you. Thank you all for listening.